Today our readings focus on Mary, so for a prelude, I'm doing Lo, How a Rose is Blooming. Good morning and welcome to St. Gertrude, as today we celebrate the fourth Sunday in Advent. We welcome everyone who is here present today, as well as those members of our community who join us through the live stream. This Mass is reproduced with permission under our license A728690. We ask everyone now to please rise and join us in singing our opening hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, hymn number 38 in your breaking bread, verses 5 and 6. O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, number 38, verses 5 and 6. Open wide our 
Good morning and welcome. We gather in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In a special way this morning, we welcome the Hermes Putz family who are here for their baby's baptism. My sisters and brothers, today with the church throughout the world, we celebrate the fourth Sunday of the Advent season. The light of our Advent wreath is today completed as we make our final preparations for the birthday of Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus, do not delay. Enlighten our hearts. Dispel the darkness of our minds. Filled with your light, may we rejoice at your coming. Amen. What name have you given your child? And what do you ask of God's church for Ignatius James? Baptism. Parents, you've asked to have your child baptized. In doing so, you are accepting the responsibility of training him in the practice of the faith. It will be your duty to bring him up to keep God's commandments as Christ taught us by loving God and our neighbor. Parents, do you clearly understand what you're undertaking? God, parents, are you ready to help these parents in their duty as Christian mothers and fathers, mother and father? Ignatius James, the Christian community welcomes you with great joy. In its name, I now claim you for Christ our Savior. By the sign of his cross I'll make on your forehead, then have your parents and godparents do the same. Let us pray. Lord, fill our hearts with love as you reveal to us by an angel the coming of your Son as a human being. So lead us through his suffering and death to the glory of his resurrection. For he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Micah. Thus says the Lord, You, Bethlehem Ephrathah, too small to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient times. Therefore, the Lord will give them up until the time when she who is to give birth has born, and the rest of his kindred shall return to the children of Israel. He shall stand firm and shepherd his flock by the strength of the Lord, in the majestic name of the Lord his God. And they shall remain, for now his greatness shall, shall reach to the ends of the earth. He shall be peace. The word of the Lord. Please join us in our psalm response, number 658. Turn to me, number 658.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. In holocausts and sin offerings, you took no delight. Then I said, As is written of me in the scroll, behold, I come to do your will, O God. First he says, Sacrifices and offerings, Holocausts and sin offerings, You neither desired nor delighted in. These are offered according to the law. Then he says, Behold, I come to do your will. He takes away the first to establish the second. By this will, we have been consecrated through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. The word of the Lord. Hallelujah, 
Gospel according to Luke. Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste to a town of Judah, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed are you who believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. The Gospel of the Lord. The example I'm going to start with is 1809, but you can do this with pretty much any year, probably older than 50 years. In 1809, Napoleon Bonaparte, busily conquering nations, was the headline in every major paper in the world. It was a dark time for the world. Like today, if you focus only on the headlines, you might soon think the world is going to hell in a handbasket. But in the same year Napoleon was born, I mean Napoleon was busy conquering nations, these people were born. Charles Darwin, Abraham Lincoln, Alfred Tennyson, Edgar Allan Poe, Felix Mendelssohn, Oliver Wendell Holmes, all born in 1809. That gives a very different spin to the year. Babies do that, huh? Babies give us hope. They allow us to see things in a new light. Today's gospel story of Mary and Elizabeth is a similar kind of refocusing. Amidst trouble and turmoil, Remember the babies. For Mary and Elizabeth, these babies, we focus them, and they haven't even been born yet. In a world which was certain that Caesar was the most important person, these two babies counted for nothing. Yet today, John the Baptist and Jesus Christ would certainly be remembered long beyond the historian's concern with that particular Caesar. Babies hold all potential, and they call forth from us the best that is within us. And this fourth Sunday of Advent, it is possible this is a time in this season that you dread, just 
few more days to get ready for Christmas and too much to do. This is the right time to reflect on today's gospel. Two women meeting, each with child, each frightened at that prospect and delighted at that possibility, each focused on wondering what this new life might bring. In a way I suspect only mothers can know, Mary and Elizabeth know, the babies in their womb need them. They need their help in order to survive and will need that help for some time. Lots of people need our help. Not necessarily a purchased gift, although that can be very nice. Not necessarily a tray of cookies, although that also can be very nice. But our help, a listening ear, an open heart, a few uninterrupted moments. The good news is that the first Christmas wasn't perfect, and this Christmas also will not be perfect. We aren't here for perfection. That's just when you're dead, so don't worry. We're here for faith. Our model is Mary, and our task is to strengthen faith and bless God. So I would like to suggest one thing to do in these final days before Christmas. Do what Elizabeth and Mary did. Put everything else aside every now and again and spend a few quiet moments with a good friend or a family member or even with God. And in those few moments, don't try to fix anything. Don't buy anything. Don't make anything in those few moments. Just be with someone you care for and someone who cares for you. And be attentive to the baby. Hope gets born anew every year if we let it. As the poet said, though Christ a thousand times in Bethlehem be born, if he's not born in me, my soul is still forlorn. Be hope-filled these days. Christmas truly is in God's hands. Enjoy the gift. You guys are going to stand over on this side. Do you please stand for the litany of the saints? In this litany, we recall the names of the holy men and women who have gone before us, the names this baby now bears. We ask that they watch over and protect all of us. The response to each is pray for us. 
Holy Mary, Mother of God, St. John the Baptist, St. Joseph, St. Peter and St. Paul, St. Ignatius and St. James, St. Carl and St. Rachel, St. Mary and St. Elizabeth, St. Francis and St. Margaret, St. Gertrude, all holy men and women. Please be seated. This is the prayer of exorcism and anointing before baptism. In this prayer, we acknowledge there is evil in the world, which is to say there are times we could love, and instead we choose not to love. We pray God to protect Ignatius. <laughs> You're so cute. From that evil. We're great friends. <laughs> Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you sent your only Son into the world to cast out the power of Satan, the spirit of evil, to rescue us from the kingdom of darkness, and bring us into the splendor of your kingdom of light. We pray for this child. Set him free from original sin. Make him a temple of your glory. And send your Holy Spirit to dwell with him. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. I need to get right in here. turn, <laughs> or at least on a chin. <laughs> Hello? We anoint you with the oil of salvation in the name of Christ our Savior. May he strengthen you with his power who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, we now ask God to give this child new life and abundance through water and the Holy Spirit. Father, you give us grace through sacramental signs which tell us the wonders of your unseen power. In baptism, we use your gift of water, which you have made a rich symbol of the grace you give us in this sacrament. At the very dawn of creation, your spirit breathed on the waters, making them the wellspring of all holiness. The waters of the great flood, you made a sign of the waters of baptism that make an end of sin and a new beginning of goodness. Through the waters of the Red Sea, you led Israel out of slavery, to be an image of God's holy people set free from sin by baptism. In the waters of the Jordan, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Spirit. He willed that water and blood should flow from his side as he hung upon the cross. After his resurrection, he told his disciples, Go out and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Father, look now with love upon your church and unseal for her the fountain of baptism. By the power of the Spirit, give to the water of this font the grace of your Son. You created us in your own likeness. Cleanse us from sin in a new birth to innocence by water and the Spirit. We ask you, Father, with your Son, to send the Holy Spirit upon the water of this font. May all who are buried with Christ in the death of baptism rise also with him to newness of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand. Parents and godparents and all who have gathered, you have come to present this child for baptism. By water and the Holy Spirit, he is to receive the gift of new life from God who is love. On your part, you must make it your constant care to bring him up in the practice of the faith. See that the divine life which God gives him is kept safe from the poison of sin to grow always stronger in his heart. If your faith makes you ready to accept this responsibility, renew now the vows of your own baptism. Reject sin. Profess your faith in Christ Jesus. This is the faith of the church. This is the faith in which this child is about to be baptized. The response to each of the questions is a strong, I do. Do you reject Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty promises? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. This is our faith. This is the faith of the church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Rachel and Carl, is it your will that Ignatius James should be baptized in the faith of the church we have all professed with you? Okay. You can hold. You want his head over the water. Ignatius James, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, has freed you from sin, given you a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and welcomed you into his holy people. He now anoints you with the chrism of salvation. As Christ was anointed priest, prophet, and king, so may you live always as a member of his body, sharing everlasting life. Amen. Ignatius James, you have become a new creation and have clothed yourself in Christ. See in this white garment the outward sign of your Christian dignity. With your family and friends to help you by word and example, bring that dignity unstained to the everlasting life of heaven. Amen. Receive the light of Christ. Parents and godparents, this light is entrusted to you to be kept burning brightly. This child of yours has been enlightened by Christ. He is to walk always as a member of Christ's body. Keep the flame of faith alive in his heart, always. The Lord Jesus made the deaf hear and the, doom, and the dumb speak. May he soon touch your ears to receive his word and your mouth to proclaim his faith to the praise and glory of God the Father. Amen. Can we welcome our newest member. <laughs> your place. That's a box for the candle. I think he likes me because we have the same hair, so it's... Uh... <laughs> Please stand for our intercessions. Gracious God, you called Mary to visit Elizabeth to help her in her need. Help us now to offer our prayers with the same spirit of service. that all the baptized will be bearers of Christ in all we do. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That international leaders will create a climate in which peace and understanding will grow among people from all walks of life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that those facing important life decisions this season be inspired by the example of Mary, who longed to do God's will in her life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That people who are traveling at this time of year will do so safely. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
that those of our community who are far from home or loved ones may feel the embrace of God's loving presence, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Ignatius James may continue to grow in God's wisdom and love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For, for all who have died, especially Paul Kanur, and for the intention of this Mass, Joseph and Isabel Lakowski, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we place these intercessions before you as a sign of our trust in you, who sent Jesus to us and sends the Spirit to lead us to pray to the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Please join us in our offertory hymn, The Litany of Mary, by responding, Pray for Us. Stand and pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Lord, may the power of the Spirit, which sanctified Mary, the mother of your Son, make holy the gifts we place upon this altar. Grant this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. His future coming was proclaimed by all the prophets. The Virgin Mother bore him in her womb with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist was his herald and made him known when at last he came. In his love, Christ has filled us with joy as we prepare to celebrate his birth so that when he comes, he may find us watching in prayer, our hearts filled with wonder and praise. And so with all the choirs of angels in heaven, we proclaim your glory and join in their unending hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in 
God, our Father, you are most holy, and we want to show you that we are grateful. We bring you bread and wine and ask you to send your Holy Spirit to make these gifts the body and blood of Jesus, your Son. Then we can offer to you what you have given to us. On the night before he died, Jesus was having supper with his apostles. He took bread from the table. He gave you thanks and praise. Then he broke the bread gave it to his friends, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, Jesus took the cup that was filled with wine. He thanked you, gave it to his friends, and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. the Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. We do now what Jesus told us to do. We remember his death and resurrection. We offer you, Father, the bread that gives us life and the cup that saves us. Jesus brings us to you. Welcome us as you welcome him. Father, because you love us, you invite us to come to your table. Fill us with the joy of the Holy Spirit as we receive the body and blood of your Son. Lord, you never forget any of your children. We ask you to take care of those we love, and we pray for those who have died. Remember everyone who is suffering from pain or sorrow, Remember Christians everywhere and all other people in the world. We are filled with wonder and praise when we see what you do for us through Jesus, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Please stand and let us pray now for the coming of God's kingdom as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your friends, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join us in our communion hymn number 704, Hail Mary, Gentlewoman, number 704. Oh 
Please stand and let us pray. Lord, in this sacrament we receive the promise of salvation. As Christmas draws near, make us grow in faith and love to celebrate the coming of Christ our Savior, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Today's announcements. This is your last weekend to take part in the Giving Tree. As in last year, because of the pandemic, we're collecting gift cards to be distributed by either Care for Real or our refugee ministry. Care for Real has asked for $20 cards from Target. The refugee ministry is asking for gift cards from Target, Jewel, or Aldi. Put your card in the appropriate box over here in front of Mary's shrine. Take an ornament out of the basket and place it on one of the trees in the back of church. Thank you for your generosity. Everyone is invited to linger after this Mass this morning to enjoy the sounds of the heavenly horns as they serenade us with their unique arrangements of traditional Christmas carols. They'll begin right after the In Memoriam reflection piece, which comes after the recessional hymn. The full schedule of Christmas and New Year's Masses was mailed to every registered family, is available online at the parish website, and is also printed copies in the newsletter available, <coughs> excuse me, the doors of church. <coughs> excuse me. The Lord be with you. Amen. Bow down your heads and pray for God's blessing. Lord, may all Christian people both know and cherish the heavenly gifts they have received. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass has ended. Let us go now to bring the hope of Christ into the world. Thanks be to God. Have a great week, everyone. Please join us in our recessional hymn, Stay Awake. It's not in your books. Just follow along. It's pretty straightforward. And clap. <laughs>
Hallelujah.